and welcome. Here he is, our fearless leader, Billy. And if you remember last week, Darlene was telling us about our fearless leader. So here he is, the one and only Billy Warren. Can you just open it? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, well, hello there, and uh, welcome to this episode of our YouTube channel, which we are extremely proud of. My name is Billy Warren. I'm chairman of the Alabama Renaissance Fair. This is our 33rd year. Uh, we started in 1987, and uh, now we've expanded it over time to a series of events that start with the one where we are right now at a costume-making workshop. We have it every year on the second Saturday. Then the third Saturday is the big feast, and the fourth Saturday and Sunday are the days for the fair. And now that's the way it goes every year. And we'll for the foreseeable future. And we thank you for watching today. Thank you so much. Now, how much fun do you have every year with this? Well, I'll say this. You've heard me say it before, and the other people in the round table have heard me say it. If it quits being fun, then I'm out of here. Uh, and I'm serious, serious about that. Because everything else I seem to do in life is so serious. This is my one big fun thing, and I look forward to it for that reason. The whole community appreciates this because every year we have so much fun. It's good for family, people, just people to show up and have a great time. Well, and that's that's a good point too, Christopher. Uh, it has remained a, a family event. We we don't we won't ever change that a family friendly event, and uh, and it's free. Admission is free. And we've done that by design as well. Regardless of family income, we want every kid and every adult to come to the fair and really not have to spend a penny. Now, of course, we hope they'll buy some things from vendors, and we hope they'll buy some food while they're here, but nobody's going to move around and say, what have you bought today? You can actually come and not spend a single thing. And we, as I say, that's, that's by design. Right. And that, that makes it easy because, like you said, some people don't have it, but they can come and enjoy the music, enjoy the fellowship, and have a great time and learn stuff. And we're all on level ground, meaning if I spend $50, so be it. But the person next to me might spend 10 or nothing. And we're all on level ground, and we go away having fun, having had fun, and looking forward to the next one. Every year I look forward to this. This is a marking in my book. For each year it marks it's time to get ready for winter and do that. So this is something I look forward to every year to close it out the summer. And well, and, and too, that's by design, Christopher, because before we started, well, we I was still a curriculum director in the school district in 1987 when we started. It was for several years thereafter. But we wanted a festival that would be in the, in the school year, because most festivals are in the summer, as you know, and we wanted one that would cover as many curriculum lines as possible, of course, the Renaissance Fair is an obvious choice for that. Um, but we did our homework, meaning we did our research to find out when is the, at least the safest time to have an outdoor event, and though it's not guaranteed, we found that October is that month. Uh, of the year that is the most reliable in terms of weather. Uh, again, we've had some rain over the years, but thus far, and I probably ought to knock on my wooden head, but thus far we've never closed the fair all day long. We've had to close it down for a little bit. People went to their cars, the shower stopped, and we came back again. Now, that's subject to change at any time, of course, but it has, it has proven what our research said, that October is the most reliable event. Usually it's better for our, our guard, because some of our guards are so hot, even in cool weather, right. you're quite warm. And and you can add layers. If it, is, if it does turn out to be cold, you can add some layers to the guard and, and be perfectly warm. That's the good thing about a Renaissance Fair. When you do come in garb, uh, then you can alter it the way you need to. Yeah. 
I've always kidded around. If you're not careful, you just might learn something. Now, I bet with your family career, probably, family that has something to do with this fair. All the education and family time. Well, of course, as I said, I was curriculum director when we started and was for several years thereafter as well. And and, and, uh, and that, that really was our reason for starting it. Uh, we were... I mentioned that we were looking for a festival that would cover as many curriculum lines as possible. And we, so we looked at the Renaissance, of course, the historical Renaissance that began in France, Italy, you know. What better, what better theme than that? Because the historical Renaissance during that period was the rebirth of learning and architecture and art and history and science and all the rest of it. So it was a perfect choice, and yes, education has been our goal from the beginning, and it remains our goal. So, in order to accomplish that, we work hard to build an audience. We know that if, if a festival just appeals to adults, when those adults die, the festival is dead. So we, we work hard to build an audience. So, we have an art contest for kids in grades uh, K through six on Renaissance theme, not poster contest. This is an art contest. So we get all kinds of paintings of castles and dragons and princesses and all of that. And then, but it causes the kids to really think about the Renaissance at least. Then in grades seven to 12, we have a sonnet writing contest because Petrarch, the Italian, Often started the sonnet form during the Italian Renaissance. So we have a sonnet writing contest for kids in grades 7 to 12. And then we have um, chess tournaments in all the schools, or at least in the schools that choose to participate, because chess, of course, dates back to antiquity. Uh, and then at the fair, we have the chess playoffs from the tournament winners in their various schools. So, uh, yes, education has been first and foremost and remains there. I know it has spilled over into the lectures on Sunday, yes. which I filmed one last week. We had special permission to come in and film. And then this Sunday, there will be another one with a good friend of mine, Dr. Lowe. Yes. And, uh, and then the final one is a is a Dr. Uh, Carl Franks who will do the third one and uh, as you said that is our that is that is our, our nod to the oh when you're outdoor filming you have to deal with whatever the noises right. are right well, Take it as it that, comes. that's perfectly okay anyway uh, <coughs> the the uh, out the uh, lecture series is our nod to the literary of the Renaissance, and um, and uh, it, it, we're just so proud of those because we have a working agreement with the uh, history department at, at the University of North Alabama, and so through them, and then through some local people too, we we get just excellent speakers every year for those. Uh, John Givens did last Sunday a really fine program on, uh, entitled Henry V, uh, from Asian Court to Shakespeare. And uh, then, uh, as you said, Dr. Lowe will speak this Sunday, and then Dr. Franks, uh, the third Sunday of the month. And they're all free, we might have to add. That's right. Just as the fair itself is free. So we're all about building audiences and not putting up any kind of barriers. Something I have found is when I first started coming to now, the wonderful quality of friends I have met, and this will last the rest of my life, good quality people. And such interesting people. Yes. We all have very unique hobbies and interests. <laughs> exactly. And from all kinds of backgrounds, and of course that's what makes the world go around as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, it... All of us profit from associating with each other. We, you know, we have the round table. Uh, that is our planning group. I mean, you would call a planning group for a Renaissance fair a planning group. You've got to call it the round table. That's right. With a nod to King Arthur, right? Mm -hmm. So our round table, our only requirement for being on the round table is if you're willing to be part of it and willing to work with us. Fine. So we have high school students when they can come because of 
their schedule. College students, uh, homemakers, uh, retired people like me. Uh, so we don't say, okay, you've got to have three children or be blue-eyed or left-handed or whatever. Just if you want to help with us, come and join us. And come out and have fun. <laughs> absolutely. And maybe even learn something along the way, as you said earlier, right. uh, by accident or whatever <laughs> else. Yeah. We just really enjoy this, Barrett, and I really want to thank you for doing this back in the day and getting it started because my plan is to keep going until I can't go anymore either. Well, that's my plan too, and uh, I'm hooked. <laughs> I am too, yeah, of course I am. And now my own children have grown up with it, and now my grandchildren are enjoying it. I have some twin grandsons who look forward to this day every year, and they're so happy that their grandpa is part of it too. So it's, it's become a real family affair. It's a great community event. The whole town shows up. Yeah, exactly. Really it is definitely a cross section of the town, uh, and the and the park. I guess Christopher, uh, my favorite part, at least one of my favorite parts in there, is when the all the tents are being set up in the park, seeing uh, a medieval village kind of come to life. Yes, that, that, that's that just really does something to my heart when, when that begins. I feel like those little kids, come on, hurry up, Mom and Dad, let's yeah. go, let's go, hurry. Yeah, exactly. When minute you see that, but yet we're grown and we still feel that way. Well, and that park is just literally covered in colorful tents, and mm -hmm. then we have the stages where we have all kinds of entertainment of the period, and whether, it, you know, whether it's musical entertainment or this year we have a, a group now that, well, we... We've not had this particular group. We've had their particular uh, art form before, but it's it's medieval martial arts, yes. and we have a group. Looking lunch. forward to that. Yeah, and we had a group a few years ago, but the members of that group lived in various towns, and it was difficult for them to get together. So now there is a group in Huntsville. So we're really, really pleased to have. Uh, I mean, you know, I learned something a few years ago. I didn't know that there was a thing called medieval martial arts. I know it goes all the way back into into uh, Asian history and all that, but I did not know that in European medieval times that there was a martial But there is, and this group is excellent. And I don't mean just to talk about them because we've got all kinds of very musical. We have dance groups. We have um, uh, guitarists and uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat with our Society for Creative Anachronism. Don't you love that title? Society for Creative Anachronism. In other words, it is saying, okay, we are blatantly doing anachronisms here, so we'll just tell you that's the name of our group. Society for, for Creative Anachronism. I used to belong, in, that's how I first got to here. Oh, really? By belonging with them, and then I... I jumped camp and came over here, and this is where I fit in. Well, and I taught high school English and history for years, and uh, I remember we would, in class, talk about anachronisms and how if you're going to write something historical, you better do your research first because you don't want to say something happened in such and such a period when, in fact, it's 200 years back. But if you just admit up front that you are the Society for Creative Anachronisms, you can get by with anything. That's right. We're even looking next year having a <laughs> having jousting on bicycles. All which, right. We, we, no, there's a group in Germany that does that already. We found that on YouTube, and and it, it's just so clever. We we're looking at possibly having it. You know, getting a group together to do that in 2020. We just found it the other day, so too late to plan it for this year. Now, I have one question that I believe all of our viewers really wants to know. Sure. This is a very important question. This year, are we going to have turkey legs? We <laughs> are going to have turkey legs, yes. And they are delicious. I can tell you mm -hmm. ahead of time, you can take it to the bank. Now, if I'm proved wrong, I will say that I never said this. No, no, they, they are good. The people and this will be deleted. <laughs> yeah, this will be. 
Yeah. Now, now that I, I can assure you, that, yes, we will have them, and I can assure you that yes, they are very. Good. Yeah. Did we have any of the people with the cream sodas? Yes. 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 They have moved from one part of the country to another, but actually closer to Florence now than they were because they were in Indiana. But anyway, yes, it's our same people that do the uh, sarsaparilla and the cream soda and the root beer. And I don't think we could have the fair without them because they have those, you know, you buy the bottle and then you take it back and get it refilled and all of that. So, uh, yeah, that would be fair. Well, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and chatting with me for just a few moments and had a great time as always. Well, and that's what we're about is having a good time. Well, I, I am really dressed for the occasion, that's for sure. But we're at, we're at an outdoor workshop, so I guess as casually as I'm dressed today and not in Renaissance garb, that it's okay. That's right. <laughs> so stop by, have a good time, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.